Hey guys, and welcome to the video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Uptime Killer. It's a self hosted Uptime dashboard that you can use to monitor all your services on your home lab, or if you have hosts in the cloud, you can use it as well. I also use it to monitor my personal websites. So, yeah, I have a lot of you guys have been asking for this. Today we're going to be running it on my home lab, which is running Proxmox, and there is a Kubernetes cluster on top of Proxmox. So, we're going to be deploying it the Proxmox using Argo CD. And then I'm also gonna show you how to deploy it with just manifest files. All right, well, let's get started. So let's first start here. I just wanna explain a little bit about what I have running in my home lab. Like I said before, as a, um, I'm running Proxmox as my virtual environment, you know, uh, and I have a few machines on there. As you can see, we have, I'm running AdGuard as my DNS provider and also ad blocking. And then I have a few rancher hosts, which are gonna be, one is the rancher front end, and then I have a master and two worker nodes. I'm also running Portainer and Trinas Scale. If you've ever been to my website, about.jmclock.com, that is actually running on this um, Portainer server, and it's running through a Cloudflare tunnel. I might go over that. That's actually a pretty interesting project. I might go over that in the future, but let's get back to what we're doing in this video, and that's, we are gonna be running Uptime Kuma. Now I wanna explain a little bit about what Uptime Kuma is. If you've ever used Down Detector or Uptime Robot, it's basically a dashboard that shows you the current, if, if the service that you're monitoring is up or not. Um, and it'll do that by either sending a ping or just by checking to see if the website's still up. Uh, I have um, Uptime Kuma already set up on my cluster. And you can see here, I'm monitoring a few things. I have my um, Proxmox host that is sending a ping request. I also have my Unify uh, Dream Machine Pro sending another ping request. My Rancher server, uh, Argo CD, Portainer, TrueNest Scale. I have all my Rancher servers here and it's pinging the server itself. And then down here I have some self-hosted services that I run and then public services as well. I have a website called alternative to gas.com. Uh, and then of course uh, my about.jamaclock.com website. So yep. And you can see I have almost hundred percent uptime. This particular page is my dashboard and this is the front facing dashboard. Um, as you can see, I have a SSL cert and that is because I have cert manager set up a traffic to create self side certificates using my domain. So this local.jamabot.com, that's uh, just internal to me. You wouldn't be able to hit that from the outside. But let's take a closer look at, at what we have in terms of setting up this Uptime Kuma server. Uh, as you can see here, these are our services right here. Uh, like I said before, let's just open up this basic service right here. This is for my website. If I go ahead and hit edit, we could see that we're monitoring an HTTPS site. I named it about that jam o'clock and then this is the URL right there. So if we go to this website, we can see it's up and an uptime coma, it's up as well. Now the options over here, this is sending a get request and it's basically getting back. Um, if it's up, it'll get back a certain response. And if it's down, it'll get back another response. I'm not going to get too into that, but usually anything from 200 to 299 as the status code is going to give you, um, a success. Uh, in Uptime Kuma for HTTPS. Uh, let's look at a server. I'm going to open up my Rancher Master server. And you can see this is pinging the internal IP 10.0.0.0.176. Um, and it's really simple. It just pings it on a specific port. Um, you get a packet size right here as well. Uh, and then it'll run every 60 seconds to make sure that that is up. I'm going to show you how to create that in Argo CD first. So let's go over to my Argo CD installation. As you can see, these are the three um, whole lab services that I'm running on my Kubernetes cluster, not a, not a whole lot. Um, uptime is right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this. And now that we deleted it, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into Rancher just to make sure everything is deleted, all the resources are gone. If we go into the cluster logs, we can see that it's stopping a bunch of stopping and deleting uh, persistent volume claims. If we go in here and look at the persistent volume claims, we shouldn't see anything. 
This has uptime cooldown. And if we go in here and look at our pods, we should not see anything in that default theme space for uptime Kuma. Uh, and as a note, uh, this is a pretty basic install of RKE Kubernetes cluster. Um, I do have a few apps. I have traffic, I have metal LB. I also have Argo CD set up and Longhorn as my storage. Um, so that's a good thing to note. Let's take a look at the uh, deployment now that we're gonna be publishing. And we can see this is just a simple deployment for Uptown Kuma. And the container port is gonna be 3001. Here's the mount path right here. And we're gonna be mounting that to the persistent volume claim called Uptime. Um, and as well, it says, I think it's gonna pull the image every time, <clears throat> always. Um, so that's great. Let's look at the um, service now. Now what the service does is it targets the port 3001 on the container and it publishes that to port 80 and the selector is going to be the app is uptime. Now we can look at the persistent volume claim. Not much to see here. I give it a hundred megabytes of storage. And then last but not least, let's look at the ingress. Now your ingress is going to look a little different than mine. Mine is a very simple ingress. Like I said before, I have an SSL cert, self-signed certificate. Um, and this is the website that we're going to be hitting. It's uptime.local.jamlock.com. And I'm going to be using the ingress class as traffic external. And of course, we're going to be using web secure with the default headers, which is a middleware that I've applied. And then here's the secret name that I use for um, the certificate. So what we're going to do, um, since you can see this is my personal repository, we are going to first apply this in Argo CD. I'll show you how to add this application in Argo CD so that everything gets automatically pulled over. You can see that the um, directory is personal slash uptime. So I'm going to come into Argo CD now and I'm going to create new app. I'm going to name it uptime with the default project name. Prune resources self heal prune last. Um, since we're going to be doing this in the default namespace, I'm not going to auto create the namespace. Repository URL is just going to be my um, GitHub repository, which is jmclock personal. And of course, we need to point it to the right path, and that right path was slash uptime. That was the right directory. Here's the Kubernetes URL, the cluster that we're going to be deploying to, and the namespace is defaults. Now, all we need to do is hit create. And we can go in real time, see these uh, elements creating. Uh, we could say that we already have the persistent volume claim created. Probably just needs to be assigned to this pod. We also have the service set up and the ingress route. Um, so let's go back into Rancher and we'll see the resources that have been created. And you can see here's the uptime pod right now. Um, and if I click into this, it looks like it was uh, it's it's up right now. Um, let's also go into our storage. We can see the persistent volume claim right here named uptime. Like we said before, it's hundred megabytes. Um, and then if we go into the services, we can also see the uptime service right here. Now, if we hit the URL, uh, that we applied in the service, then, and this is the, the URL right here. It's uptime.local.jmlbox.com. You can see uptime is up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an admin account and we can see that everything is wiped clean because it's a fresh install. Um, so anytime you delete, obviously from the cluster or uh, remove it, uh, the if you remove the persistent volume claim, it's going to wipe all your data. But luckily I have a backup that I can restore from and I will restore that um, after we destroy Uptime Kimmel one more time. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this app one more time. And I'm going to show you how to apply it just from the manifests. So if we go back into the directory with the uptime uh, manifest right here, we're going to see these four like I, like I talked about before. So I'm going to open them all up. <clears throat> and you can um, create the files locally and apply them over the CLI. You can see that um, we don't have uptime coming running anymore. Um, but if you want to, you could just do kubectl um, uh, apply and then the file name and the, the uh, namespace. 
but we're not going to do that. We're just going to go back into Rancher, this file of Rancher. Um, it's really simple to apply YAML files from here. So I'm going to copy this entire thing right here, and I'm going to import the YAML. And let's just do this all in uh, one, one foul swoop. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the second, the service. I'm going to put that in there. And then uh, after the service, what did we have? The persistent volume claim. We'll go ahead and add that. Great. And if you know anything about YAML, it can be a little touchy. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if we had an issue here. Um, so this is the persistent volume claim and then we need the ingress as well, the ingress route right here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that and that'll be the last file that we're going to be applying to this cluster. I'm going to hit import. I would see that um, the resources are being applied to the cluster, so we'll hit close. And we can watch that pod. We'll go back into workload pods and we can watch that pod start up there. You can see it's uh, where is it? container creating right there. We'll just wait for that to start running. You can see it's running. So once we hit that URL again, um, let me refresh right here, actually, just to make sure we'll go into private mode and we're able to hit it right there. Um, so yeah, really simple. Um, if we log back in, there's nothing in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, restore from a backup and you can do that right here. Okay, so we're going to hit overwrite and we're going to choose file and conveniently uh, my file is located in my downloads folder. I'm going to go ahead and grab that and let's hit import. We'll hit yes without reading the warning and we could see this is all set up here. Um, so let's go back and we could see if that our status page is still there. Uh, no, there isn't a status page. So I'm just going to refresh one more, chart, one more time to make sure. All right. So what got imported over was all of our hosts that were monitoring, but the status page did not get pulled over. And you could see that right here, J McClock was my status page before, but right now it's broken. So we need to recreate that. So I'm going to create a new one. And we're just going to do J McClock slash J McClock. And this is what you get when you see the status page for the first time. Uh, what you do is you can add one of the monitors that we have already set up. So I'm going to add Proxmox, for example, and we're going to call this Infra. Um, and then I'll add another monitor to Infra. Let's say uh, TrueNASDAL Unified uh, Pertainer and, 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 and Argo CD Rancher. Uh, now let's add another group. Let's say uh, Services. And I'm going to add since uh, smoke paying about an alternative or all services. And then I want to create a special group for rancher. So let's add our rancher components here. Here we go. Uh, is it up? You know, is it actually up or is it just the DNS? Because it's always DNS. Um, so let's. Uh, Let's create that page right there. And then there are other changes you can make here, like the title, the, the description, you could do a footer. Um, you can show powered by if you want, I don't want that. Um, and then we'll just hit save. And now if we hit the, is it up page for, or greeted with, um, our, you know, status page that we just created. So yeah, I really like uptime Kuma. It's a simple tool. And I, I really think that, um, it can help you guys out, especially if you're paying for something like Uptime Robot or, uh, you know, another product that's paid. This is self-hosted, super easy to use. You don't have any branding on there. You can add your own logo here and just use this. So great, uh, great little tool. I, I commend the, the developer. I think his name is Lotus Lam. Thanks for creating the image. Uh, thanks for maintaining it. And as, as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.